And today we're going to talk a little bit about what to do when you just don't feel like it. Are you going to make excuses or are you going to have a strategy in place to still get to your desired outcome? What's the appropriate thing to do? We all have those times. There are times when it just feels so overwhelming to take on one more thing or do one more thing. And there's some times that just something is way more interesting sounding, right? And you got to decide which one you're going to do. You're going to have to prioritize a little bit. Sorry, my glasses are making me a little dizzy today. I have in between eyes. <laughs> um, so just know that we all have those times. No one is on 100% of the time. No one is perfect in getting things done. It's more about figuring out how to react to the fact that you don't feel like doing something. So very first thing is it takes less time to do a thing than it does to create an excuse or complain about it. <laughs> so remember that one. Um, but other than that, I have found three ways to make it easier to gather the motivation to still get something done and still have fun and honor the fact that my body and mind are, and heart are taking me in a different direction, right? So the number one thing is when you have a bunch of stuff to do and it's just not feeling right, just remember, if you connect it back to your desired outcome, you can get the next couple things done, the next couple things I'm talking about. So there's always that desired outcome pulling us forward, motivating our behaviors so that um, we can reach that objective, right? We want to come forward and, and have that outcome happen at some point. We don't have to be so hard and fast tied to a deadline for it, but you want to keep it so you can be in flow. Some days it's just not happening, but what can you do? You need to know that you still want that outcome and you are making a choice and you are being 100% responsible for the choice you're making. And by that, I mean, we don't make choices in the moment. We have to pre-make them with strategy. And so you may decide that, or actually you may choose today to not work on the things you planned to do today, but that means you still have to do them a different time. And um, if you decide ahead of time that you're going to figure out how much of something to do or when to do it instead, before you go about doing something completely different, you're much more likely to actually reach that desired outcome than if you just make an excuse and don't do it. That's when the self-talk kicks in, right? That's when the stuff about you're a failure, you're not good enough, you're not perfect, all that stuff comes up if you don't have a plan ahead of time. So I wanted to just talk to you about what the three things I have found that really work. Um, and when you're checking in about how you're still going to get that outcome and what you're going to do about it today, always kind of weigh against the, the minimum amount of whatever it is you can do today. Is there like you don't feel like cleaning the whole house? Well, can you get away with not doing part of it, but you have to do the laundry so you have something to wear tomorrow? just do the laundry, forget everything else. You know, what's that minimum vial, viable dose of getting another step closer to your outcome and then having fun or then having um, some downtime to um, deal with whatever's coming up for you. So always think about how you can use it for a possible reward right? What if you did the one thing and then the thing you want to do is the reward for just getting that minimum daily dose done, right? That's a great way to look at it. So again, just three things that are better than excuse. Taking 100% responsibility that you are choosing not to do something today or not to do it to its full extent or not to do everything on your whole list. Where are you going to draw that line today to still maintain a little forward momentum? And sometimes that extra thing to do to just maintain momentum is to rest a little bit more or is to take some percolation time before continuing down a path that doesn't seem to be working quite as smoothly as you'd like. Um, 
But the other part of minimum viable dose of what you're doing every day is so that you set yourself up for success, having a strategy ahead of time of what you're going to do, knowing what your plan initially was allows you to just push it back a day, an hour, a couple hours, a week, and not lose momentum because you have a plan of when you're going to do those things instead. Um, that's part of why I love time blocking so much, where you plug and play what you work on when. It will it gives you a little bit more flexibility to swap out times on a day you don't feel like it. Um, it lets you absorb and process information that came up the last time. Um, and I, what comes to mind for me is when you're doing, when you're decluttering something, sometimes it brings up emotions or sometimes it, um, it's a lot of physical and mental work to make a lot of decisions quickly. And sometimes you just need to pace yourself a little bit differently and it's okay to catch up on the processing in terms of the mental and emotional stuff, and then get back to it ASAP when you're feeling a little better. All right. You can find a lot more of these insights on my blog at morethanorganized.net slash blog or in the next Declutter Masterclass, which you can also find at morethanorganized.net. And I'll see you next week. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, tell all your friends. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.